Hey, Seth. Hi, Steve. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Just uh, had a program with the Adventure Camp kids this morning. Oh, nice. Yeah. Where, where was it? Out at the uh, uh, Linda Lauren? Yeah. Great. Nice day for it. It got a little hot by the end, but it was <laughs> could have been worse. Yeah. I think it's just going to keep getting hotter for a little while now. Oh, it's not as bad as last July. I don't know if you remember that, but. Um, it is only the six, so careful. <laughs> uh, last July, we had 0, 0.0 inches of measurable precipitation on Nantucket. So anything is better than that. Well, yeah, that's true. We've had a lot more uh, fog. This is been a foggier summer than we've had in quite a while, which is reminds people that you can't always just fly in and out of Nantucket at will. You could try. <laughs> I've been on some planes where the attempted destination was the island, and the place where we landed was definitely not not Nantucket. Well, the wind blew my agenda off my computer, but it doesn't look like we have a, a quorum at the moment anyway. You need um, four, four or five? Five. No, I, there five. are nine of us. We need five. Yeah. Okay. How are you doing, Linda? Hello. Because we, um, I think we added this meeting in order to specifically go over the survey. Did we need a quorum? I thought it was going to be like a working group. I still need a quorum. Yeah, I need a so quorum good. to open the meeting. Okay. And I got to read the little speech and all that stuff. And it's posted. So we don't have any choice. I think Phil is still away. Jeff, did you happen to find out if anybody wasn't coming or who couldn't come? No, uh, we've sent out a couple of reminders too. I haven't heard from anyone that they wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna try calling Jesse. Who else is here? Oh, where's uh, Peter? Probably on a probably on a hike. Here's Emily. All right. Let me call, let me call Jesse. Oh, there's Emily. Yeah, it's Sam, Pete, Phil, Dave. Yeah, Dave had sent me an email saying he was in North Carolina, I think. But well, he's on the way to North Carolina with, with oh. my friend's truck. So I know he's not here. Jesse's coming in. That will give us Seth, myself, Steve, Emily, and Jesse. Jesse's coming in now. Cool. Yeah, Peter's in Maine. Not that he told me that, but no, he did tell us that. We talked, we said that last week. So, as soon as Jesse gets here, we'll go. There she's coming in under Susan. <laughs> Changing my name. Jesse. My uh, Susan, you've changed. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Okey for the dokey. 
So we'll go we'll go ahead and open it. It's 105 of the July 6th Thursday meeting, um, the Nantucket Madiket Harbor Plan Committee meeting. Um, I have to read this, correct, Jeff? Mm. Okay, script for remotely conducted open meetings. Members of the public wishing to participate in the meeting must use their full name or Zoom access. If full names are not used, people will not be allowed to participate. Jeff, you are the, somebody is the uh, host there, so you'll have to let people in and out. The town reserve the right to remove any member of the public from the meeting who doesn't use a full name or accent appropriately. As preliminary matter, this is the Harbor Plan work group. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipate on the agenda are present and can hear me. Seth? I'm here. Steve? Present. Uh, Jesse? Present. Emily? Here. All right, Jack? Here. Jack? I see him. Kristen? Here. Jeff? Here. Um, Kamal? Here. Sheila? Here. Uh, Sam? And somebody's coming in by phone. Do you want to identify who you are coming in by phone? Yeah, Phil Smith. Oh, there you are. Out at sea? No, Board of Health meeting. You're missing a lot of entertainment. No, I had enough entertainment. I've been trying to help Danielle out of the hole she dug herself in out there. Um, well, she, okay. she, yeah, anyhow. It's... Yeah. So we've done all the name and everything here. Good morning. Good uh, afternoon. This open meeting of the Harbor Plan work group is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order. Due to the state of emergency, there's no longer. I've got the old script. In order to mitigate the transmission, I've got the old skip and skip that. Uh, ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment. For this meeting is convening by video conference via Zoom app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Uh, please note that this meeting is being recorded and all attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer or anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials have been provided to the members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless I note otherwise. We are now turning the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct for our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold all of, hold until your name is called. We're a little bit looser than that. Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. Members wish to engage in a conversation with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. For items with public comment, after members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment to those members. Other public that have joined the meeting via Zoom, members of the public who wish to speak must state their names and be acknowledged by and speak through the chair. Each vote taken in the meeting will be deducted by roll call. So back to the agenda. We welcome. Is there an approval of the uh, agenda? Somebody want to make that motion? So moved. Second. Was that Jesse or Emily? Emily. Emily made the motion. Seth seconded. All those in favor? Seth? Aye. Steve? Aye. Emily? Aye. Jesse? Aye. Uh, Phil? Aye. And myself. Okay. Approval of the minutes for 2723, 3723, 32223. He's been busy. 41023 and 5123. Were there any uh, changes or corrections on this? Some of those may have already been approved. I copied and pasted and uh Okay. Does anybody have any 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 questions on the last three, which are the ones we were missing? I don't know if there is ones for five one yet i'm not sure if those have been sent out 
we can hold these until the next regular meeting, which is next week. Does that yeah. seem to everybody okay with that? Give you time to read them anyway. Um, review of online survey, turning it over to Kim. All right, thank you. Um, so in the chat box, you should be able to get to the survey. Let me repost it though, in case anybody came in late here. Um, and we wanted to go through the online survey, see if you guys had comments, questions, changes. Uh, the general gist for the online survey is um, try to keep it as short as we possibly can because people like short surveys. Uh, try to make it easy for them to complete, and um, but also try and make sure that we're getting the information that we're looking for. So looking for um, any comments people have on what's happening in the harbors and related to a number of topics which we've already identified. Maybe some people have some new topics, but really looking to solicit information on any issues they might be having in the harbor any ideas they might have for improving upon those issues to include in the plan. Um, so I can share the survey as it stands right now. So there's a blurb at the beginning that um, just gives some background on why we're doing the survey, some background on the plan, and some links if people want to know what this is all about. A quick little picture that shows the shaded areas being the planning area. And then the survey questions begin. So there are seven questions. And um, the first one is just identifying connection to or interest in um, the harbors. So just to kind of get a sense of who these people are. I'll, I'll go through the questions just quickly, and then we can go back and talk about anybody's comments. The second question, which we're trying to figure out if this is a useful question to include, but um, this talks about the harbor related topics that are basically the topic areas that are included in the plan and how important they think these different topic areas are and then also gives them the opportunity to add any other topics that they'd like to see included in the plan update. Then question four is really the meat of the survey, and this is getting at what are your th their thoughts on any issues impacting these topic areas below and any opportunities or recommendations for improvements for, for those topics. So this is where people can write um, any thoughts that they might be having. And we did include a for example next to these topics to try and kind of get them thinking about what, what we're um, looking to get in there. So we go through these different topic areas. And then the end is just kind of the last catch all, which, oh, I see, don't like a weird um, issue there. Okay. Uh, um, so numbers five through seven, um, this is just looking at, do you have any other issues? Just kind of a catch all for anything else that you'd like to see included in the plan update. Uh, their email address, if they wanna stay updated and then any other final thoughts. So uh, our this is Phil. Oh yes, go ahead. Uh, uh, for a question for Kimberly. Yes. Um, Regarding those, I thought question number two was excellent, trying to flush out all the different, you know, in the topic areas. Mm -hmm. Did you did you add any topic areas that we decided from the public meeting we should we we, we should uh, add? I don't, I didn't go back through what we you know how the public meeting went, but I know that there were some things we looked at each other and said, gee, maybe that should be its own topic area. Mm -hmm. I agree with you, Phil, so because I, I I emailed back about Chapter 91, fuel costs, uh, all the stuff that we had at our table, that Seth and I had at our table. Mm -hmm. If Seth wanted to talk about anything else, but we had talked about a great deal of nine, Chapter 91 and a great deal of the cost of fuel, et cetera, et cetera. That has to do with the commercial fishing and all that stuff. Yep. So there, yeah. So there were some things, there were some things that came out in, in living color in the public meeting that we should probably uh, 
give its own little topic area. Yeah, I guess the question with that would be, would people consider those topic areas to fall? Like this is kind of a categorization of a way to try and categorize what was talked about. Um, and would those topic areas fall under any of these? Like for instance, fuel costs, would that fall under commercial shell fishing slash fishing? Um, no, because those of us who own boats here have the same problem with the fuel costs. Right. We're not commercial fishing and we're not shell fishing and we're not scalloping or any of that stuff for recreational boaters. And we have the same problem with the fuel costs. Mm -hmm. It might fall under working waterfront slash commercial waterfront. Yeah. And, and we're Kim, not, we're, we're Kim, recreational fish. We're recreational boating, which is in there, including motorized thing. And that um, fuel costs is a big deal. And so is chapter 91. Well, chapter 91, I think, could be, you know, in my opinion, could be a separate issue, but fuel fuel could fit under multiple topics here. Which is why it should be its own thing, because it, it covers across a lot of this stuff. Is fuel a prompt in anyone, Kim? What's that? Is, is fuel a prompt, and is oh. chapter 91 a prompt? Yes, and, they are. Um, so we have... Well, we have fishing costs here under commercial shell fishing. Um, we do have chapter 91 under public access here. Um, chapter 91 compliance specifically. Uh, fuel costs. I mean, we can, we have economic impacts associated with harbor activities. We can definitely, oh, chapter 91 is also, we have under here for working waterfront where we can definitely- Include yeah, right after tourism, I'd go fuel costs. Yeah, we can put fuel costs here. Yep. I would make chapter. I would make chapter ninety one its own little separate thing because it's pretty big. Okay. Do do others agree with that? Absolutely. Well, my only concern is a lot of people who are going to look at this survey that aren't already well-educated aren't going to know what chapter 91 is. Yeah. Then they may go and get themselves educated, so. Right. Yeah, Kim, perhaps if we added that, we need another column saying do not know. Right. Or neutral. I don't know. <laughs> or we could just say do not know. Or no concern. <laughs> let, let me ask a question. This is Phil. Um, I think that we need to uh, press a little harder on can there be more mooring uh, spots made available? And I don't know where that would appear in those categories or would that be a separate, uh, a, a separate thing? Now, we, we don't want to load up this thing. You're trying to, you, you, if you start adding too many categories, then people are going to say, gee, I just don't have enough time for this. Mm -hmm. So it is a trade-off, and I I, accept, I understand that, but I do think we are the we are the group that can address this issue of have we optimized, maximized the amount of moorings available in the harbor? Up to now, I think everybody is you know sort of looks to other uh, authorities to say no, we're at our limit, we can't go any further. We we are really in a position where we can say. We can ask the question: What what is the right number, and are we, you know, are we at that number, or do we still have more room? And 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 I would I would like to have this something that just doesn't get swept under the carpet. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, first of all, Seth's hands up. But anecdotally, I'm looking out at the harbor right now, and physically, between Brant Point and Shimo and areas west, there is no physical space left. Come take a look. Um, I know. Also, I spend, I'm out there every day. I'm out there maybe, every day. But there are spaces. She, there are spaces. Maybe, I think that are available. Well, maybe Sheila can answer that because I thought Sheila's that on here. Sheila's yeah, up here somewhere. Like, I thought that was Army Corps of Engineers determined that already. Well, yeah. I, I would yeah. like to. I would like to have the Army Corps of Engineers tell me. Okay, right, hang on, everybody. Hold on. I got Sheila's on here. We we are capped at 1,800 moorings from the Army Corps of Engineers, and um, I can I will find that for you in writing. 
but that that's what we are capped at and um we are almost at it now does that mean that we have to believe the army corps of engineers is absolutely right on that in 1800 it's the right number i mean we can maybe appeal to them but that's what we have to follow that's the one that authorizes okay. moorings in in for, for okay. everybody I mean, I'm not even sure, Sheila, where we would expand it to. You got to stay out of the channels and you can maybe go towards Shimo, but it's, it's as you painfully know, it's chaos out there. Right. And the problem is parking. And that's what they base a lot of this stuff on is parking and people's access to be able to get to the mooring areas. And, uh, you know, we already have problems like nobody wants dinghies on the beach and nobody wants any of that type of stuff. So. I, I, I don't know where you're going to find any places that have parking or dinghy availability for people to get out to their moorings. Our dinghy dock is jam packed here at the town pier. Um, we're hoping for maybe someday, maybe petrol landing will work out. But right now where we are, um, we don't we don't have room. And I don't it's know where the parking thing is. It's a capacity issue. I mean, they said the other day, they sent out a notice to airmen saying no more private jets. There's no place to park them. You know, there's, it's a capacity issue. Now, is there, Sheila, question quickly before we go to the people with their hands up here. They've been up for a while. Is there any possibility of expanding the town pier or are we capped at the town pier? Um, we did just do a big construction project on it and we gained like uh, six more slips, but uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much all we have room for because there's no room for us to go out or we went we went out um, more for protection. So we put up a wave fence that went 100 feet um, to the to the north. Uh, west. And so that'll block block us from the northeast winds coming in and, and uh, destroying our floating docks. And, and it's good protection. I, it's amazing what, what we've already done, but um, as far as more expansion, I, I don't see where we would go. All right, Seth has his hand up and Sam has her hand up. So I think we'll go to Seth next or whoever gets there first. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so we're not gonna solve all these issues at this meeting today, but you're all laying into a, another category that we need to add um, from the discussion of today and the discussion of the public meeting, it's infrastructure and economic viability. So that would handle moorings, piers, petrol landing, more boat ramps, uh, more service, more services at the town pier or more services at any pier that all falls in into infrastructure and economic viability. And that would, I think, could cover fueling operations too. Um, yes, he is right. Because Seth, you're going to bring up the ramps. There was a lot of discussion at our table about more public yeah. access ramps. And I see, that was a big problem. And I see you talking about working waterfront there, yeah. which I think is not the same. Working waterfront is really industrial operations. This is for all users. So it would be recreational, uh, commercial, e everything. So what, what would you um, call that? I'd public call access it, ramps. I would call it infrastructure and yeah. economic viability. Um, and I'll, I do have some more points, but I know Sam go ahead. to talk, so. No, go ahead, keep so going. I, I personally think chapter 91 does not need to be a separate thing. I think it's covered in public access and in working waterfront. And I agree with Phil, or maybe it was Steve who said it, that, we're getting a little bit too specific here and that the people who know what that is already are going to pick up on that, but it's not, these are kind of like broad topics that we're getting at. That's, that's a, sort of a subtopic of these things. Good point. And then I agree of having the, the, the answer that I think just added was like, do not know or no, no preference. I think that's important because if someone doesn't care, then they, to just put no preference. Thank you. Thanks. Um, Sam, you had your hand up. Yeah, so I, lots of other little things, but I think kind of I wanted to give the broad feedback first. 
I do agree that I think this first question here with 10 is getting a little out of control. I think, in my opinion, that's where it's kind of like, okay, these are maybe the four or five like really broad stroke topics. I like the introduction of do not know because that tells us where we need to educate better. And my kind of, again, bigger feedback is when you scroll down and all of them being open-ended, my experience with surveys is you're going to get people that fill out that first part of the very important, somewhat important, and they'll completely skip the long answer. So if there was a way to kind of reconceive this to some extent of at the very beginning, making it very clear, these are the six like big category, what do you think is important and not? And then in, instead of having 10 things in subsequent questions, if you had, okay, under shell fishing and fishing, then like a scale of one to five of commercial access, recreational. Like, I think that there could be a different way to reconceive this where you'll actually get better feedback from people a little bit more specifically. Um, looking at this list of 10, like there actually are only four if we really were to zoom out. Um, but with them being open-ended questions, there's not an opportunity for people to understand that. I don't know if I'm making sense. I would, I would maybe just suggest a restructuring of questions. Hmm. Yeah. Um, we had talked about the open-ended question question <laughs> um, in that we know that often it also can make it more difficult to analyze the results. Um, we also were saying, you know, we want places for people to be able to, we don't want to feed them all the answers, if that makes sense. We want it, we want places that people can, you know, think about boating in the harbor and what are the issues that I'm facing as I'm boating in the harbor or what what are things that we could do to make it better. And so we thought that open-ended would give people more of a chance to be able to provide their feedback on those types of things versus, you know, having a structure where it's, it's all multiple choice or, um, I don't know, do, do other people have thoughts or comments on that? I, I agree totally with Samantha. My experience is very similar to hers. Um, and I think that there's still opportunity for having a question at the bottom that says like, do you have other feedback? But I, I, I was gonna say, she said it first, but I was gonna say a lot of times the open-ended gets skipped and then you said it, it's very difficult for the staff to compile the answers and get to anything quantitative because you know the, you have to sort of like group responses. Is this similar enough to this? Is that similar enough to that? and make some arbitrary decisions. Whereas if you have a numerical scale, it helps us not only with what are the important important topics, but what are the prioritization of topics. So uh, I think it's, I know it's a lot of work to go back and redo it, but I, I would prefer that. If I could jump in just for a second um, and back us all up to remind us why we're doing this survey. This, um, uh, this is an opportunity for the public to basically give us input along the lines of the discussions that had happened at the public meeting. So we, we do want them to be able to share everything with us, even though we know that open-ended questions don't lend themselves well to qualitative analysis. We don't really need to do a qualitative analysis at this point. Um, it, this is still very much in the information gathering phase. Um, and then the other thing, Sam, to your point is we did think about how to word these topic areas to provide a little bit more detail. And we ran into problems where if we put something like um, commercial fishing access as a sub bullet and somebody checked that, we wouldn't know just based on their checking it if that was something that, you know, they needed more commercial fishing access or there was too much, or they live next to commercial fishing access and it was too loud. So we wouldn't know why they were checking that. And what we need at this point is really those details that we can then build into the recommendations. So while the multiple choice is helpful for you know, that first question, trying to establish priorities or where people are really interested in something, 
or I like somebody said, the do not know shows us where we need to educate more. Um, I, I do want us to remember that we, we do want people to be able to provide details at this point in our information gathering. So I'm not saying that we can't add more multiple choice questions, but I really would argue strongly for some sort of open-ended I, I totally agree. Open-ended has to be included because you do want people. In my opinion, I think people are going to look at this and they're going to fill out the couple that have, um, you know, like little check marks. Most people will glaze past the open-ended. So I think that's where, again, a simple restructuring, if it was, so wait, pause scrolling for one second. So if you had like coastal resiliency, honest, like on a scale of one to five, what's your level of importance, then the open-ended question of what feedback do you want to give? I think what I'm trying to say is instead of having all the bubbles and then all the open-ended, if you did like natural resources on a scale of one to five or whatever we may choose, where does this fall on importance for you? And what's your feedback? I think you'd be more likely to get people to fill out some open-ended if it was, okay, put it on a scale, give a comment. Put it okay. on a scale. I think because again, personally, I'm just going to blaze past ten open ended in a row and go. Nope, don't have time for that. Yeah. If yeah, we so just sounds like you're out, advocating. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, just a restructuring. Use all the same info, all the same style of questions, but chop it like like I said, just restructure it, and I think you'll get more um, interaction. Thank you for clarifying. I think I misunderstood. You're suggesting basically to combine that checklist with the open ended by topic as you scroll down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that may make that, I think I tend to agree with what Sam is saying. I think it might tend to get an answer more of what we're looking for. Question, in the, the opening paragraphs up there, um, do you have the link to the existing plan? There's no point in discussing it with anybody if it's not in there. Yep, we do. Um, we have it here. Okay, just want to make sure because if somebody wants to read what we've already done, you know, 14 years ago, yep. so they can answer the questions with some some clarity, they're yep. going to have to sort of skim through it. Yeah. Yeah. And Sam, I, I hear what you're saying. Sorry, I didn't. I also didn't fully understand. I agree. I think that that makes sense. And um, I can work on restructuring. I wonder if there's any condensing so that we don't have 10 questions then um i can i can strategize some condensing as well and and then hopefully with the condensing we can add the prompting you know examples that then will draw that information out of people like seth, for seth has his hand cost. up also sorry what's that seth has his hand up i think he has something on this one yep Uh, no, sorry, it's not in this. I'm in favor of the condensing. I mean, I think we condensed at the public meeting to five topics, so we could probably get there for this. But the two other points I have generally are, the first one is, is there any way to create an incentivization structure for the survey to, because that's been shown statistically to greatly increase participation. Mm. And then the second one is on the demographic question. I have one concern about the categories that are included. Yep. So we have like own or work in Nantucket business. Well, what if you own like a house cleaning company? Why is that relevant for the harbor plan? So I think it has to be like marine or coastal based business. Yeah, although, I mean, I think if somebody was to be cleaning houses, but, you know, had a particular interest in the harbor, I think we, like they're saying, I still don't have access. We still would want their their input. Yeah, I mean, but they can check multiple things here. So they would probably just check, you know, year-round resident. Mm -hmm. uh, or, I mean, we can keep the business on there if you want, but for me, it's if you own a business or you work in a business that's completely unrelated to the harbor, it doesn't tell us anything different than just the fact that you're a year-round resident. Mm -hmm. I also there's would a know lot of people that there are a lot of people here that um, are in those businesses that don't necessarily. Yeah, I see where he's going with this. I I agree with with Seth of like, I think that it's important yes to know business owners, but 
dialing into that next level of waterfront, like, you know, harbor working folks, I think is important. I also would maybe make the note, um, we just, we made the distinction between recreational fisher and boater. There's commercial fishermen. There's also lots of commercial styles of boating. When you think about the Barton and Grays, you know, mm -hmm. there are, there's lots of other styles of commercial, um, mooring people. So I don't know if you want to just do commercial. I mean, a lot of the guys use the term waterman. There's probably a better mm -hmm. word out there, but I just, we made the distinction on one, not the other. And I don't know if it's better yeah. to have fewer or more. About commercial. Well, you about, yeah. I mean, you should probably put, there are a lot of us who fish. There's a lot of guys that work in landscaping that fish at Grant Point. You can see them down there every night which takes me to my other thing. We're gonna do this in multiple languages, right? Like Spanish. We, that would be great. We need to, we would need to get a translator, which I can't remember if Jeff had said that if you guys had a translator. Yes, I think there's somebody is who does that because I, I think we need to do this because there's a lot of, Hispanic population that spends a lot of time on the water and a lot of time fishing down on the waterfront. Yep. Sorry, just to go back. So commercial enterprise. Saying... Commercial enterprise instead of commercial fisher. Do you think that works, Samantha? Well, should it say commercial marine? Do you say, you know, yeah, commercial, commercial waterfront trades? I worry that the word enterprise is maybe limiting to people who own the waterfront business, not the employees of. And I think the employees of have just as important a perspective. Commercial waterfront trades, that I think that's pretty inclusive of think through with me, friends. I, again, like I think, I think, I think the people water dependent. Water dependent business. I mean, hey, Steve has his hand up. He may have an answer. No, I'm just saying, I think any of these are fine. I think people that have an interest in it can check the box. They're pretty bright to figure out that that's where their interests lay and they would check it because that's of their interest if their employee or the owner. Um, the other thing I was going to ask about, you know, if we we're going to try and condense things, you know, we, we talk about coastal resiliency in the harbor plan, but we also have the coastal resiliency committee. So I'm wondering, you know, if that's something that we really need to dial down into, or is that something that we, you know, if we're going to try and condense, leave that to them. Hmm. Well, Peter's I think, not here. I think so. <laughs> this plan, we did want to make sure that this harbor plan is consistent with the coastal resiliency plan. And I think we wanted to have a bit more of an emphasis on coastal resiliency in this specific plan. So I think it's still good to solicit information from people. Um, and, you know, we can see whatever information we get, we can see how much we want to include in this plan versus in what the coastal resiliency team is doing. But um, like, I think the last plan didn't include as much coastal res resiliency and now we would like to include more in this one. Okay. Um, okay, this is helpful. Um, so I have some edits to make. I think Emily has her hand raised. Emily. I um, thank you. Um, I'm in favor and support of where this discussion has gone. Just on the sort of the last note of um, demographics. I guess at this point now, I'm a little bit confused about the difference between the own work in a marine business and the commercial trades. Yeah. And how those are differentiated mm -hmm. or if we've kind of created two categories that are sort of the same. Yeah. I think we can take own work in, in a marine business out. I think the commercial waterfront trades mm -hmm. makes more sense. Okay. And if somebody gets very specific and wants to, they can fill out other and put their own information in there. I always find the other categories the most interesting of the uh, survey. <laughs> yes, I know. Seth and I were at the other table and oh, we were yes. packed. Yeah. <laughs> we were packed uh, the whole time. Madam Chair, if I may. 
Yep. Jeff, or I guess whatever other staff is available, can we talk about the uh, translation services available to the town or if we have a budget? You know, I, I know at my work, we've used professional translation services that are paid, that are highly effective, but I don't know if there's a budget for that, for this. Maybe Jeff, Jeff might not be there. That's definitely something we can pursue. Um, if we're looking to, you know, and thinking about when we want to start circulating this survey, you know, ideally we have a couple of events coming up in July. I, I know Samantha said there's a clean water coalition. There's the state of the Harbor forum. In my mind, it would be great if the survey was live for those things. So people could be able to access it, we could send a QR code and that would be a good way to kind of start spreading the word, um, which one of those events is next week. So I'm not sure if we would be able to do the translation before then, but I think that with that something that we can make a priority to get done. Yeah, we can talk offline and if we have a budget, it'll be easier. I mean, I can tell you from my past experience at my work, the paid translation services that we get um, at least in the more common languages like Spanish and Portuguese, the the turnaround time is like 12 to 24 hours. So it's very okay. fast. That's great. Um, we, we do our stuff in like the top most, six, six most uh, spoken languages on Nantucket. And for a few of them, they take a little bit longer, but mm -hmm. sometimes the Spanish ones we get back in like four hours. Awesome. But it is paid. So we'll have to check the budget. Yep. And the, um, the area plans, the uh, Grant Point Association is coming up. The Surfside Association has two. They have one in July, one in August. There's a lot of these associations that are having their, their uh, annual meetings now. Great. All right. Any other comments on this for now? Um, one other thing that we did want to talk about. So, um, we do have uh, some time from Woods Hole Group, which um, Dak is on right now um, from Woods Hole Group, and they are going to be making a some sort of a, a mapping tool, which in my email, I sent you guys an example of a, a mapping tool that we can use as another way to gather information from people. Um, in an ideal world, it would be great if it was associated with the survey, although they're not able to really finalize it until the end of July. So I'm not sure how to coordinate that with the survey. It's also something that we can use, say, at the August public meeting and have that be, you know, uh, we can put up a QR code and have people be able to go right to the mapping tool from that QR code and provide input. Um, did anybody have a chance to look at the the links that were sent earlier today? Okay, or Dak, I don't know if you have any anything you want to add on. Um, well, actually, would you want to bring it up on your screen there and just do a quick drop a point, draw a polygon type of thing? If you had it in one of those. 50 tabs you had open. <laughs> Surprisingly, it's not in one of those, but let me, I can get to it pretty quick. Okay. Yeah, so we have uh, a GIS expert who has created these, uh, she calls them story maps sometimes for other towns. We have one currently uh, active with the town of Sandwich. And it's, um, if you'll see, it's eventually will we'll show up um, an aerial image with various layers that you can turn on or off that show like probability of flooding, probability of water height in various years. I mean, all those layers and things can be totally customized for whatever we want, um, but it also allows users to draw a, a shape around some feature and then a text box will show up and say, what is this you're drawing? Um, you know, explain what you'd like what to draw attention to in here. Um, Yeah. Was it, yeah. Is it with this that you? Yep, that's the tool. Okay. And then if you click the little gray, yep, there. 
and then you can just click around and draw a shape and then it'll say, what are you drawing here? So this is an example and, and all these text boxes can be modified to say whatever we want. Um, and I think the, uh, if you were to draw a red, the other option there on the right, instead of the green polygon, choose the red. I think that one even show, brings up different choices when you finalize your shape. Oh, yeah. So mm -hmm. you can have more, more than one mode or method, but we don't want to get it too complicated because then it, um, I'm, I haven't, I would have to ask our, our expert who does this um, just to make sure that if, someone adds something that someone else can't go in and delete it because um, I know that for this one, there's there's that one shape that was pre-existing. I think if I went in, I might be able to change it. Um, but that's, that's sort of an internal thing. We just wanna make sure that other people can't change other people's input. Yep. Yeah, so this is really cool. Um, what I'm wondering is, if we were to launch the survey, because we have some meetings coming up, um, launch the survey, start circulating it. If this is something that we add on, um, you know, and once it's ready towards the end of July, and, and we're obviously going to miss some people, but we'll still get some information that way. And then we can use it at the August meeting as well. Um, I don't know. What do, what do people think about that? We use every tool we have. Yeah, this is Phil. I think that the, the, the challenge is going to be to try to find as wide an audience as possible. I mean, for example, we would probably we should have all of the names and email addresses of the people who attended the first public meeting. Uh, at least I, I hope we got that. But yes, that I type of thing, we, we just have to figure out. I don't know. You know maybe we, we, we buy a couple of ads in the Yankee or something. Or, the, or even better than Nantucket Current. Everybody, everybody's on that. But uh, you know, just get the word out. You know, as yep. broad as possible. Yep, definitely. I see Emily's hand is up. Yeah, thank you. I had taken a just a quick look at the map earlier, and I think it looks like a great tool. I think my concern would just be to make sure that it was very clear to people how to use it. Um, and that there's some very concise, simple instructions on how to do so. And uh, because I think it could seem sort of complicated to folks who aren't used to interacting with that type of a software. That would be me. I have a flip phone. <laughs> but I can just say quickly too, I think the map's great. I agree with Emily that it needs some solid directions, but I I especially appreciate the report that was sent around from Sandwich. And I think like the combination of all the story maps there with the data about, or with the, the not data, with the pros about resiliency that they're doing, I think it would be a great place to actually move for our plan. So instead of having like a, a more static plan, like in the past, having something that's dynamic like that would be great. Um, just a thought. Cool. Great. All right. Well, I have some really great feedback from you all. So I'm going to go and make those edits, hopefully today, and recirculate a new survey for you all to review. We do have a meeting, another Harbor Committee meeting on Monday. Um, so lots of Harbor Committee meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff looked excited about that. <laughs> yeah, I just haven't gotten noticed that our posting went through yet. So I okay. gotta make sure that, that it did. Okay. So we think we have a Harvard committee meeting on Monday. No, we um, definitely do. Okay. It sounds good. Um, so hopefully by then we'll be able to take a look at the survey and confirm that we think it's ready to go. And in the meantime, we'll work with DAC on um this new survey tool. Uh Steve, did you have a comment? Uh, question, have we determined about an in-person July meeting since being July 6th now? Yeah, so that I was going to move on to that next. Um, yeah, so um, thinking about July and August, um, how we want to do this. So for July right now, we have a few different tabling opportunities. I also sent you guys some tabling materials 
uh, to take a look at. So these are materials that we can bring to a table that hopefully provide information on the, the plan, the survey, and a place to get people's email addresses to stay in touch. And so I believe um, Sam said we could do something at the Clean Water Coalition. Is that right, Sam? Awesome. And then um, Emily said we could do something at the State of the Harbor, uh, which I think is like a week later. So that's great. Um, so there's two opportunities for July. Um, what did we think? And, and then we also have the potential to do something at a farmer's market. Um, do we think that that's enough for July or do you think that we need another formal meeting? And then assuming that we're going to have a bigger formal meeting in August. I think if we plan well enough in advance for a morning at the farmer's market, and then maybe another shift of people that afternoon, because so farmers markets are on Saturday mornings. Mm -hmm. So then on Saturday afternoon, maybe we move ourselves over and ask the folks at Tidal Creek right next to the town pier. Mm -hmm. um, I think between a couple of us, we could cover two shifts of tabling. And if it's well circulated in you know news and social media, I think in lieu of a scrambling for the July meeting, I think we could get a lot of one-on-one -on -one feedback mm -hmm. with that alone and not having to try to like rent a space and AV equipment. Right. Yeah, since we are, or it's already July 6th, so it'd be pretty tight to get something together by the end of the month, I think. I, I feel like these other opportunities that were really great for, for reaching out to a lot of different kinds of people that we might find on the street, at the farmer's market, at these different meetings. Um, and we can also circulate the information about where we're gonna be so people can come to us if they would like to. Okay. And for August, Jeff, have you had any success with finding a spot <laughs> for a meeting? Yeah, I have a couple of feelers out for both in town and Madikit. I'm just waiting to hear back from one more, but I'll, I'll know by Monday. Great. Okay. So when is the state of the harbor exact? When is that um, meeting, the state of the harbor meeting exactly again? It's um, Tuesday, July 18th. What time? 4.30 at Nantucket yeah. Yacht Club. HDC. Mm -hmm. Okay. I hate things on Tuesdays. When's the Clean Water Coalition? I got an email about that this morning. Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday, July 11th. Oh, great. <laughs> what it's, time is that it's one? When we can get access to the yacht clubs for hosting, it's good days for them, unfortunately for you. I'm sorry. But uh, for Clean Water Coalition, we made the decision to mirror the same time as State of the Harbor, so we're not confusing people. Also, so Tuesday, 430. 430 to 6.30. And where's that one? Uh, great Harbor Yacht Club next week. And then I'll remind you all at the end of August for one at Nantucket Yacht Club. Yeah, yay, yay. I hate Tuesdays <laughs> for so many reasons. Okay. Um, that sounds good. One, one other quick thing I just wanted to note, Seth had mentioned in um, an incentive, which I do think is a good idea. If anybody has any access to a somewhat cool incentive, um that we could use for the survey as you know a, we'll draw a random winner um please email me and let me know um gift certificate to a restaurant or anything along those lines hmm. i can i can mine that one okay great yeah think about it and um yeah we have found in the past with our other surveys it definitely helps with participation that makes it makes it fun. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Those were the big things that I wanted to uh, go over. And we do have another meeting on Monday, so we can jump right back in. Uh, just quickly, if you do go forward with an incentive, you have to make uh, contact information required. Okay. Otherwise, we don't right. know who we're sending incentives to. Yep, you're right. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking about that. How do you do that? Yes. Okay, Phil, did you have anything to add? Motion to adjourn. <laughs> okay.
Okay, is there a second? Second. Anybody? Second? Second. Okay, Emily seconded. All those in favor, Seth? Aye. Uh, Steve? Aye. Jesse? Aye. Emily? Aye. Phil? Aye. And myself, aye. Thanks, everybody. Good work. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good weekend. See you Monday. Bye. Yep. Okay.